Kelly with Sofa Creations and today I'm going to be making the Kayla bag from Mecca Posh. Whether you're heading to the office, meeting friends for brunch, or attending a special event, the Kayla bag is the perfect companion. With its sleek and stylish design, this bag is sure to impress and make a statement wherever you go. So grab your pattern and supplies and join me in making the Kayla bag. This is Kelly again with Sofa Creations and we're making the Kayla bag by Mecca Posh Craft. So we're gonna go over the materials we need to get started. So first we're gonna cut out from our main exterior fabric, you're going to have your main panel. So this is the exterior panel and I have already folded in the long sides and the bottom, and I have interfaced with Decaville Light. If you feel like your vinyl or your leather, whatever you're using is um, sturdy enough without interfacing, you do not have to interface. But you will have to make these markings, so follow the pattern directions for the markings. Okay, so again, this is my, my uh, primary exterior fabric. Also from this fabric, you're going to need your two side panels, and those will also be interfaced with, um, I'm, again, I'm using Jacobville Light, but whatever you choose to use. Okay, so you have your two side panels. Okay, you're going to need your zipper pocket facing. Okay, and I have already cut out the window in there. Okay, and you're going to need your, um, slip pocket trim piece. So I have that. These are all cut from my main exterior. If you're need, you're going to also need a piece cut from for your handle. I'm doing a roll handle, so I have cut my piece three inches wide. The instructions are for a flat handle, and you're going to need um, your main exterior plus a contrast, um, and you're going to cut those two inches wide. And the uh, width is according to the pattern instructions. So um, I, again, I'm using a row, I'm doing a road handle. So, um, so this is your main, your main fabric. Okay. Um, for your contrasting fabric, you will need to cut, again, if you're doing the flat handle, you're going to cut a piece from your contrasting fabric. Okay. But in addition to that, you want to cut your strap, your adjustable strap, you need two connectors, two connector pieces. You're going to need your um, front design panel. These pieces will be cut mirrored, okay? So you're going to have them going in opposite directions. So make sure you cut those mirrored image. Okay, you're going to need your lining flat panel. And again, it goes this way, that's the top. Your lining flat panel and your exterior frame panel, okay? And this piece will, it's better if you go ahead and add some interfacing on this one as well because we're going to be folding in these raw edges and it actually looks a lot better if your machine can't handle the extra bulk um just try to use maybe um something a little lighter than the decaville maybe a woven interfacing um but some interfacing i think works best for this piece okay so these are what you would cut from your contrast. If this these uh, connectors are for three quarter inch hardware, if you only have one inch hardware, you can still do this. Just cut your pieces to fit um, one inch hardware. So you would cut it at two inches um, because we're gonna be folding in the raw edges and it's gonna make for a one inch connector. So you can still, and then your strap will be cut four inches wide instead of three inches wide. So you can do this perfectly fine with one inch hardware. I know a lot of us have more one inch hardware than three quarter inch hardware. Okay, so you also, from your lining 
Um, I'm using waterproof canvas, but if you're using cotton, you're going to need some woven interfacing. So for waterproof canvas, I don't need any interfacing, but here's my main lining piece, my two side panel pieces. I have two pieces from my interior zipper pocket and one piece from for my slip pocket. Okay, so um, that's it as far as the fabrics go. You will also need for your stabilizer, you're going to need a piece of Dacoville Heavy or Pell Tags. Um, whatever, there's uh, different products you can use, bag stiffener um, from Tandy, whatever. There's different products you can use to get that. Um, the structure of this bag is very important. So I'm using Decaville Heavy. Um, you can even use, if your vinyl or your fabric is um, not as sturdy as you like, um, I've often, I've used uh, Decaville Heavy fused onto a piece of Peltex. That gives even more stability. So um, there's different options, but right now I'm just using Decaville Heavy. And again, I have markings here on, on the back of my Decaville. Follow the instructions for those markings. Okay, so, and then lastly, you're going to need your um, your hardware. So you're going to need some type of bag closure. I'm using a flip lock. You can use a twist lock. You can use magnetic snap uh, snaps, um, whatever you choose to use. Okay. Um, but you just don't want it too too big. Nothing too big. You want it to fit in that on that um, panel, that flat panel. So I wouldn't use anything wider than maybe one or one quarter inch. Um, high okay so you also have your two um three quarter inch uh swivel hooks two three quarter inch d rings again these can be one inch if that's all you have we have a three quarter inch adjustable strap slider i have four purse feet purse feet are optional you can use them or not Okay, and you'll need two to four rivets, um, depending on if you want to put rivets on your handle or not. Um, but you definitely uh, probably want to use some a uh, couple of rivets on your adjustable strap. So you have some rivets on hand, and then you'll just need an eight-inch zipper and a zipper pull. Okay, if you're using zipper bodyguard, or you can use um, a pre-made zipper. So um, that's it. This, uh, you know, as far as the um, fabric and hardware, of course, you know, have you some, um, you know, your scissors and um, and ruler and all that you need to, to do in your normal bag making. Um, in this case, also, you're going to need some um, glue. Um, I'm using some um, contact cement, um, but there's... Whatever glue you're comfortable using, um, that you're used to using, maybe even a spray adhesive might be what be uh, might work well. But um, that's about it. We're going to get started. Um, I'm going to show you um, how we get started making the Kayla bag. So before we get started sewing our Kayla bag, there is a little prep work involved. So I showed you on this um, main panel how I glued down. Uh, the one inch seam allowance for the sides and the bottom, okay? And so um, I'm gonna put this aside for a second. And I'm just gonna show you how I do some of the gluing here, okay? So this is the, um, the uh, this is, makes up the flat, part of the, the flat trim. So um, I'm using this, um weld wood contact cement and it, it sticks pretty well so i like that and so i'm going to use that i have this can here so it has a brush applicator i think this can is almost empty but i'm gonna see what i can get out of it okay and before we start if you notice i have lines drawn here so 
you you're going to draw um these lines i have one one inch from all the sides because that's the line you're going to fold your raw edges to so that way you'll get a half you're folding in each side each raw edge at a half an inch so one inch in from all these sides and you'll get these lines these extra lines i drew those are the half inch marks so i knew where to put my interfacing so that's optional um if you're putting interfacing or not it just helped me to place my interfacing so i'm going to go ahead and apply some glue and i just i'm just going to put it all over and again if you don't like glue you can try double you can try double-sided tape or you can try a, a spray adhesive um whatever whichever one um works better for you okay so i'm not going to glue the whole thing right now i just want to show you how to do this uh the best way i found to do this to fold it for the neatest <laughs> neatest way okay and i know some of you viewers out there maybe even maybe better than me at this okay so i'm gonna just give that a few minutes okay i know i'll have to open up another can because that, that one's almost empty but with the contact cement you do have to give it like a couple of minutes to um to dry and it sticks the best that way so um i'm gonna do that so while that's drying a little bit i want to point out the pieces that will need some glue okay so these two pieces which are those um the little uh, strap de decorated pieces, um, they're going to need glue. We're going to glue in the raw edges all around on these two pieces. Um, the flap lining panel, again, we have our one inch marks. So we know where to fold in. We fold into that those lines. Did the same thing here, the one inch marks. So we know where we're folding to get the half inch seam allowance there, okay? And then the same thing, I haven't put the lines on the side panels, um, but it's the same. So we would put our one inch lines all around, okay? So we would have our one inch lines just like this, okay? On all the sides, including the bottom. Okay, just like that. Okay, and I'll do the same with the other one. So that's where you know where you're folding into that one that one inch line. Okay, so this may have set a little long. So I'm going to go ahead. So you have we have these notches cut out. That's to help us with these corners. Okay, so we would fold this. Again, we're folding into that one inch line. Okay. Meeting up the raw edge with the one inch line. Okay. And the same thing over here. So it should meet up in the middle. Just keeping it smooth. Now, when we get to this, bring this middle up to that one inch line. And then we're going to pinch these corners together. Okay, so I like to meet them up like that and just run my fingers there and then just meet like that. Okay, same thing over here. So I'm just meeting them up like that and pinch. Okay, and you see how good that's it. And then I also, I'll take these pliers here and just pinch it good make sure i'm getting a nice crisp corner okay you can use pliers um you can also you know um use a, a point a point turner 
and just you know whatever I just like to do this it gives me a nice crisp edge okay just make sure it's kind of blunt because you don't want to end up cutting into that okay so that's just how how we're going to do it and you're going to do that all around bringing this up to the one inch from the notch and then meeting it up right in the corner and pinch, okay? Just like that. Okay, so we'll do that all the way around, okay? These little points, get your scissors, and then we're just going to go right. I lay my scissors right flush with that, just like that, and just snip off. Okay. And the same thing over here. Snip that off. And if I didn't get it close enough, I'll go in at this angle and just go a little bit more if I have to. Okay. But that's good enough. And I also, and then I'll take my pliers in. I like to use these pliers, and I'll just press it down, just to make sure it's nice and smooth. Okay, and then you'll see from the front. Just make sure everything's looking good. Okay, so that's what you'll get. Same thing over here with this one. Okay. Okay. And if you need to, you can put a little clip. But I just don't like to clip because I don't like to leave marks in my vinyl. So um, maybe just a little something heavy to lay on it if you need to. But this this contact cement works really well. Um, so I don't find that I have to clip um, when I when I'm done with doing all the sides. I like to roll it. I like to roll it out and give it a nice, smooth edge. So I'm going to do that to this piece and then the, all the pieces that I showed you. So I'm going to go ahead, get all my um, gluing done, okay? And then once this is done, once we're done with this, there'll be no more gluing until we get to the final in where we're putting the lining and the exterior together so um yeah it's a little bit of work but when you want um you know a certain design that speaks to you a little higher in a little high i mean i think it's worth the effort so um i'm gonna go ahead and take care of that and then we'll come back and we should be ready to do some sewing okay so by now you should have glued everything um, like I showed you, so um, we should be ready to sew. So I have my main exterior piece here. Um, and remember, I told you, you're going to mark these lines according to the pattern. So the first step we're going to be doing is sewing the front design panel on. Okay, that's those two mirrored strips that we have here. So these are going to get sewn onto this uh, main exterior. So the first thing is you're going to fold up at this first line down at the bottom. So this first line gets, so we're going to uh, fold that up. So bring it up here, okay? And you can add a couple of clips on the side to just hold it in place for a second, okay? So I'm just going to add a couple of clips right here on the side, okay? And then we're going to make some marks, okay? So according to the pattern, we're going to make a mark here down at the bottom at one and one quarter inch on that side. And then another, I've already put, put my marks here. So, and then we'll do another one at one and one quarter inch on that side. And then at the top, we're going to mark three and three quarter inches from this, from the, um, from the top here. So three and three quarter inches, and we're going to make a mark on each side. So that's, um, that those are our placement marks. So I've added a piece of double-sided tape to the back of each one. So the first one I'm going to place 
pay this one. And I'm going to put the mark, uh, place it on the inside, towards the middle, on the side of the marks. Okay, so not on the outside of the marks, but on the inside of the marks, toward the middle. Okay, so I'll take this piece and make sure that you have the right one angled at the right way. It should line up right here. Okay, at the top, at the edge of the exterior bottom piece here. Okay, and then I'm going to angle it down to meet the inside of my mark down here. Okay. So I just make sure, don't stretch it. Okay, so I have that one laid down. So you have that one at an angle here. And then I'm going to take my other one. And it should meet up in the middle with the other one here at the top. Okay, so now I'm going to place that one and then see my mark down here at the bottom. And I'm going to just press it down and place there. Okay, and make sure it's pretty straight. And that looks good to me. So now we have that lane. We're going to top stitch all around. Okay, both of them. Okay, so I'm going to remove the clips. Make sure you unfold it. Okay, like that. And what I like to do is, I just like to make a little line here, just kind of mark. So just in case it shifts a little, I know where I want this to line up make sure that they both kind of end at the same spot okay All right so now i'm ready to do my top stitching so <clears throat> i have my stitch length at a five okay and i'm going to get ready so doesn't matter i like to leave long thread long tails on my thread and then just pull it to the back. That way I don't have to back stitch. So one eighth of an inch seam allowance, and I'm just going to go all the way around. But it'd be nice if I make sure my machine is on. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to hold those tails, get going, and just start stitching. Okay. And just take your time and try to stay as even and straight as possible. And um, sometimes I use my stiletto, make sure I'm just getting, keeping those points down. Okay. And I wanna make sure I'm right in that point at the bottom. So I might have to adjust just a little. Okay, and turn. And then I'll come this way, across the bottom. You might have to do a little hand cranking to make sure you don't go too far. Okay. And then now I'll come back up. I'm going to pull my thread on the back and get that loop there and just pull that loop out. So that way I can tie these threads off once I get back around to that side. Okay. So now I'm going to come back up this side and I'm just taking my time. And again, I want to make sure that my points are down and that I get a stitch right in that point. Okay. Then I'm going to turn and go back up to the short side here. Now I'm ready to go back down and meet up where I started and get my final stitch should land right in where I started. And so I'm gonna make sure, lift my foot a little, make sure I'm getting right into that hole where I started. Okay, and then now I can cut my threads here. I'm going to pull that one that I just ended. This is the one I just ended. I'll, if I pull it, then that thread comes up. 
the little loop. I'll pull it to the back. And now I'll just tie these four off together. It just makes it a lot neater and you don't see where you start and stop on the front, okay? So you put one or two knots and I'm just gonna trim it and then I'll just burn those threads down, okay? So they don't unravel later. Okay. So now I have that one. I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. those off. After you do the gluing, um, it can really, this bag comes together uh, pretty fast. And, you know, it's not going to be a super fast, so there's some work involved here, but the outcome is nice. And you'll say, what? I made that? Okay. So now we have the, this design panel, these design panels on. If you can imagine, so this is where the bag comes up the, the front. And then this will be the flap that folds over. And you'll have this nice little design panel here. Okay. So now after we have that done, we can go ahead. One of the marks we made on the back is where we're going to put our our uh, piece for our lock. So whether you use a twist lock or a flip lock, so um, this is going to be uh, the male part of the flip lock. So I'm just going to take the this washer piece and lay it right in the center where my mark is and make, I think it's going to go and these two slots. So I'm going to make my marks here. Okay. And I'll take my trusty blade here. Uh-oh, that not so trusty blade that fell out because <laughs> it's loose. You hear my daughter? My daughter is laughing at me while I'm doing this. That's so rude. It's just so rude. Okay, and I'm just going to don't cut your slits too big. Okay, you don't want it too loose. Okay, and I can go ahead and put my lock here. Make sure I have it facing up the right. Some of these locks have a back. See, like that's the back. Uh, yeah. Well, no, this one, I guess it doesn't matter. I don't think it's, this one matters. Okay, so here's my slit set. Here's one. Where's the other? Did I go in far enough? Oh, there it is. Okay, so push that in, making sure that's in good. And I like to put a piece. Do I have a piece? Okay. Um, da, 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 da. I like to put a little piece of Peltex or something on the back. And I thought I had a piece over here, but I don't. So I'm going to grab a piece. So hold on. I'm going to just grab a piece of Peltex. I'll be right. Back. Okay. So I found a little scrap of Decaville Heavy, and that works just as well. So I'm going to use that. Just put some slits in that one too. And I'm going to, this just gives the hardware some extra protection so it doesn't rip the fabric later. So I'm gonna lay that down. Let me make sure. 
lay that down first. Then I'll put my washer on. And you have these flip locks here. Okay. And then I think I'm going to fold my prongs in toward the middle. Sometimes I fold them out, but I think this time I'm going to fold them in. Well, they're a little long, so I'm just going to fold them out towards the side like that. Because I want it as flat as possible. Okay. All right. Then I'll add a piece of duct tape. To keep it from poking through later. Just put that piece over there. Make sure. Okay, so. Okay. so again, so we have our that's our lock. I'm gonna visualize that. So there's there's our flip lock. Okay. Another thing we want to add. I didn't. I put it on before. I marked it before I uh, put my Decaville light on. But I can see through. I have my marks here for my purse feet. Okay. So I'm going to punch holes for my um, for my purse feet. So you're getting all this out of the way. Okay. So I'm just going to punch a hole. Where we mark the first feet. And the purse feet are optional. You don't need them. If you don't like them, don't use them. Okay, so I'm just going to push those up through the holes here. Since I have Decaville light um, on the back of my vinyl, uh, I don't think that I won't add any extra um, stabilizers. Sometimes I'll put a little piece of Peltex or Decaville heavy, but I don't think I really need it. So I'll just add the washer and then fold these down. And then I will put a piece of duct tape over each one. Mm -hmm. So whatever type of purse feet you have, some are attached with rivets. I really like those. Um, but these have the prongs. You can also make the slits and put the one prong in each slit, or you could just do the hole punch like I'm doing. Um, but I find it always better to secure it with a little duct tape and they stay put haven't lost one you can even put a little dab of glue if you want extra extra security okay so now we have our purse feet our purse feet are on and if you want to put your own label, either on the front, you can. This might be a nice place for one or right on the back. Um, I have, I might put one, I might put it right there. Put me a label. So I might measure up like maybe, um, let me see. Maybe one and a half inches from this, from the, this will be the bottom where we fold it up right there and then center it. I think one and a half inches might be good and just make sure that it's centered. So I'll find the center and then just, um, let's see, that looks good to me. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. It's not that big a deal. Okay, so I'm just going to just mark right here, and then kind of it's. I see that it's it's lined up really well with my with my lock. Okay, so that's good. So I think I'm. I would put my label right there. Okay. So 
So I won't do it just now, but I'll do it off camera. I'm just, I have the mark there, so I'll put my label there. Okay, so we have that part done. We're moving along, okay? Now, the next thing is we're going to do our handle, okay? Now, remember, I told, I've decided to do a rolled handle. So what I have is a, I have a three-inch wide piece of, um, of my exterior vinyl and I'm going to just fold that fold the raw edges in and fold it in a second time and stitch and then add my tubing and I'll, I'm going to put my handle in I really won't do that um I won't film that part because it's really not a part of the pattern but if you're following the pattern you sh you're going to do a, if you're going to do the flat strap you just make it just like you do it, um regular uh strap you fold the raw edges into the center, and then you're going to put the two um, wrong sides together and then top stitch around, and that's going to be your flat handle. So just follow the instructions if you're doing a flat handle. I'm going to come back after I have my road handle done. So I have my road handle. It's all ready. So I have, I just, like I said, I have a, I had three inches wide. I folded the raw edges to the center, and then I folded it one more time. Um, and then I just slid my tubing in. I, I used this um, 3 8 inch tubing. Um, well, no, one quarter inch. I'm sorry. That's the inside diameter. One quarter inch tubing. I just get it from the hardware store. So I just cut a piece about nine inches wide and I slid it in there. Um, and so I've marked about one and a quarter inches on each end. The end that you know there's no tubing in the end so one and one quarter that's about how far i'm going to stick it in on each side so you have these markings that we made so whether you're doing the flat handle or a road handle you have these um markings um and this is where you're going to uh cut to add your um to add your handle so i'm just going to cut cut that line and I don't like to cut the whole length of the line. I keep it a little bit shorter, just in case. I'd rather have it a little more, little snug, okay? And especially for the roll handle, because the roll handle is not as wide as the flat strap. Okay, so from the front, okay, remember, this is going to be the way our bag looks. So I want this part of my roll handle. Flat handle really doesn't matter. But the roll handle, I want the seam toward the back of the bag. So I'm just going to slide this side in here. And if I didn't cut wide enough on this, I'll, I probably have to cut it. Yeah, I didn't go wide enough. So let me just go a little bit wider. I get too nervous and I don't want to go too wide. So sometimes I don't go wide enough. Okay. Make sure I'm going a little. Okay. So I'm going to, once again, okay, I'm going to push that in. Should be a little snug. Oh, thank you, daughter. <laughs> See, I flipped it that quick. She caught me. See, my kids are so smart. This is Jazzy, my little, she's so smart. Okay. This is the one you guys see modeling my bags for me. And then she takes half of them. Hey, that's Joy. Along with her big sister, Joy. They love taking the bags for me. Okay. Because I got seven kids and I got four girls. And so, you know, I don't, sometimes the bags just disappear. Okay. So there, so did I lose my marks? A little bit, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna make sure that it's even. I try to pull it in about maybe even with my decoville. I didn't press that decoville head up down and good enough at the top because it's lifting, but that's okay. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Okay, so you see I'm pulling the handle to the outside, okay? That's how you want it. 
pushed out to the outside, not to the inside. So we're going to push out to the outside. And that's for whether you're doing rolled or flat handle. So now on the front, we're going to do a, a very close stitch. So right there up against where we where we cut here. Stay within the width of the handle. So don't go past the handle on either side. We're going to stay right in there. Maybe, maybe about 1 16th of an inch. So not very, very small seam allowance there. And we're just going to stitch that down. Okay, so I'm going to move that mat out of the way. And I'm just going to stitch. And I am going to change to a 4. Okay, let's stitch length. Okay, so now I just bring this under here. Make sure your handle stays straight. Okay, I, just want, I don't want to see any Decaville light poking out. And I'm just going to go right in there, keep it, and then I'm just going to stitch. And I'll go back. Okay, and I don't want to go too many times because I don't want to perforate my vinyl. So once or twice is enough. Okay, I'll just trim that. Okay, and it stitches this back down, the back of the handle down there. Okay, and I'll do the other side. Sure, it stays straight. Push that handle down a little bit, and I'm going to stitch. Like I said, be careful not to go past the width of your handle and come back this way. Now after I trim these, I am going to um, add a couple of rivets because what it does, see how they still stick up? The, the um, designer, she says you can either glue this down um, or you can add rivets. I'm choosing to add rivets because I also like how it gives a little, little element of bling to the um, top of the bag. So um, where's my handy dandy candy marking pen? Okay, so I'm just eyeballing it and it's about, I just want it right in the middle and maybe about one eighth of an inch from my stitching. And I'll do the same thing over here. Okay. And now I am going to get my hole punch i just got this from amazon a long time ago it works really well okay and just punch right through that make sure your handle you're going through the handle on the back i'm my fingers are underneath holding that handle in place Place and I'm going to punch my hole there. All right, and then we'll add our rivets and give them a give them a nice little punch. Let me get my rivets. These are rivets from um, Emmeline. I like these. So I just need two rivets. Put that there. Go in. I don't need any extra stabilizer because it's pretty, pretty thick. The layers are pretty thick with the handle, so I feel like that's going to hold. Okay. So now, give it. 
get my press and this is a gold star press i was one of the ones a long time ago got a gold star press never had a problem with it so for those who have problems and say oh don't ever get a gold star press hey that's fine but thank god i never had a problem with mine except for the ugly green <laughs> But I'm not trying to paint it like I see some people do because I'd probably make it worse. Okay, so now it's starting to look like a bag. You see that? You see the makings of a bag? Oh, look at that. Check her out. She's dancing. Okay, so now we're, um, we're ready to do our, um, our little flat edge piece. So let me grab that. Uh, well, it's over here somewhere. I know it's hiding because I just put it down. Are you guys like me and one of those that you put something down and then next thing you know it's gone and you don't know? Okay, there it is. Alrighty. So here it is. This remember this piece that we had to put all the glue on. Okay, so we can go ahead and get ready for this. Now, this is this is how I do mine. Okay. I mark three eighths inches. See from these little this little cutout corner here. So line it up there. And I just make a little mark, three eighths of an inch. This I do this because I want to make sure that they overlap by the same amount on each side, okay? This is not in the pattern, but I found it very helpful to do this, okay? And then you can add a little double-sided tape on here to hold it in place, but just watch where you put it because this is going to go. This, these, this end lines up with the edge of the main exterior there, and this side lines up here. So we're only going to be some top stitching the inside for now. Just the, just right. We're going to go from this end up, up this way, around, and then around and out this way. So I'm just going to add a little double-sided tape. And I'm using one-eighth of an inch because I don't want it to be in the way too much. So... And I just add, you don't have to put it all the way around. I just add a little bit here and then another little piece here. Okay. So I'm just adding those little strips to help kind of hold it down. Okay. So let me pull the backing off here. And sometimes I just feel like I'm just talking so much. But while I'm talking, I just want to thank everybody who watched my couple little videos I have. You know, it's really been like hard for me to keep going with this YouTube thing. But I have so much, so many people saying such nice things and encouraging me. So even though my schedule is so crazy sometimes, I really hope that I can just find more time to make these videos. Because they do, they help, they help me too. So I'm so glad for those of you who have subscribed. And for those of you who haven't, why haven't you? Go ahead and subscribe. <laughs> so anyway, um, so now we have that on. On the back, it should look like this. So you see, it's not all the way up to the top. It's not really, you know, um, matching, but we're keeping it up from the edge here. So it's um, it's lined up pretty evenly there, okay? So now I'm ready to do my top stitching, okay? So again, I'm going to pull some long threads and I'm going to do knock back stitch. So change my stitch list back to a five. And I'm going to start right here on this short edge get my needle down in place right in the corner 
right there. Make sure I'm in the right spot. Okay. And I'm just going to start stitching. Okay. Take your time because you're going to be doing a lot of turning. Okay. So now I did the short side. Now I'm coming up this side. There we go. Go about one eighth of an inch. If you having a problem like where do I start and where do I stop? Where do I pivot? Put some little marks there. One eight at one eighth of an inch past these little corners, so you know where to start and stop. Okay, that's what helps. Okay, so stop there. And I'm coming up this way. And I do apologize if I'm not following the pattern exactly in order. Um, I may or may not be, but I don't have it right in front of me. So I'm just going off the of memory of making. This is number four for me. That's how much I like it. Okay, so now I'm coming, getting close to the end of here. Coming up this short side. We're almost to this end here. if you want you can't you don't have to put the handle on before this part as a matter of fact i think she has you put the handle on after this part i'm not sure but it's not really getting in my way okay so now i'm back on this end so i'm going to stitch to the end and then leave those long tails so that i can pull them to the back okay ta-da okay so now on the back like I did before, pull a thread okay. and pull that loop up. Sometimes the loop gets a little hidden, but it's there. Oh, nope, see, wrong loop. So don't pull the wrong loop. There it is. Okay. Same thing over here. Okay. So just going to tie these off. Really fast. Okay. See how we're going? We're getting there. We're getting there. We're going to make it. Going to make it this time. Okay. Now burn that. Burn that down. Okay. All right. Nice. If you want to also. You can trim some of this. I like to trim a little bit of this down because I don't need that much of that. Okay. Alrighty. So, woohoo. Now it's really starting to, I like to kind of show off a little. Ooh, that looks so good. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we pretty much done with the outside okay so now we're ready for the lining so i'm going to take my lining i'm using the waterproof canvas and okay. and like i said i might be skipping around a little so i'm sorry but the steps are in there but I like to do it in this order. It just helps me keep it all together. So I have marked one inch line from the bottom. This is the bottom of the line. So Mark, this is going to be our bottom. So I'm just going to put a piece of double-sided tape, which probably won't hold this very well. I find some sometimes this is this is not my way whack tape. The way wax tape is the only one that will hold this waterproof canvas down really well for me. Okay, 
So, and then I'm just going to fold the bottom up to that one inch line. Okay. So we get rid of that raw edge at the bottom. You can even use glue, but if you're using a uh, woven fabric, you can press it and you may not need any glue or tape or anything, okay? So I've marked the center at the top and I'm going to grab my flap lining piece, which is cut from my contrasting vinyl. I am going to mark the center of that as well on this bottom side, bottom end here, okay? And right sides together, I'm going to match up the centers. And she also has you draw the seam allowance. If you need to do that, do that. But the seam allowance is going to be one half inch, okay? So I'm going to match it up here. Put, a, put my clips to hold it in place. Okay. And we're going to stitch it at a half an inch. So stay within the lining, the flat lining. Okay. So. Back stitch at the beginning and the end. You can trim it. If you trim it down, don't trim these, the lining that's sticking out on the end. Don't trim that part. You can just trim this within here and trim it down to about a quarter of an inch. But don't trim the lining on the ends, okay? You need that. Okay, so now we're going to fold the seam allowance down towards the lining, just like that. Okay, and we're going to top stitch. I top stitch from the edge of the lining to the other edge. I don't start all the way at the end. Okay. You don't need to, but I don't think it'll hurt anything if you choose to. Okay. Okay, and I am going to back stitch a little at the beginning and end. Make sure it's nice and smooth. The seam allowance. Okay. a little bit down so it looks nice and pretty okay so this is my lining with the flat lining piece attached so now we're going to add um we get ready to add our zipper pocket so i like to fold it here to get my center okay crease here. I have my crease. I'm going to use my chalk to mark placement for my um, for my zipper for my overlay. Okay, so we're going to go one inch from the seam. Okay, and make sure it's centered. So one inch from that seam. 
Okay, and I just put a little line here. Make sure whatever marking tool you use, it will come out later, okay? So there's the center, there's my line. I have my, uh, my zipper overlay piece. Grab that. My zipper overlay piece here. And it's going to be centered right there. So I'm going to put a little bit of double sided tape on the back, keeping it away from the window of the overlay because we are going to be cutting out the lining from that window. So we don't want the double sided tape to get in the way. Okay. So I just also kind of fold this and crease it a little bit so I know where the center is. Take the first piece off of the double sided tape and I am going to lay that right on the line. Just like that. Okay. And then take the other paper off. If it lets me. Okay. And then make sure that it's laying, it, <clears throat> laying straight. Okay. So now I have my overlay on. I'm going to top stitch around. Okay. If you have, if you haven't yet, watch my zipper overlay video because it's done exactly like this. Okay. So I can put the link on this video. So if you if you want. You can watch and see how it's done, but it's the same exact way. So I'm just top stitching around the outer part of the overlay. I'm keeping my threads long because I'm going to pull them to the back. Keep it neat. Neatness counts. Okay. So just take your time. We're going to go pivot at the corners. When I say pivot, it makes me think of that episode of Friends. Ross says pivot. Pivot? That's me and my daughters. Oh my God. That's like one of our favorite episodes. I don't even know how they didn't laugh on that one because if I would have been laughing. They would have fired me. Okay. Okay. Back at this corner. Pivot. Go around this way. Okay. And we're going to pull the thread to the back. I always try to remember to pull my thread to the back before I get to it. And where I started. Okay. I like to hold on to that thread before I flip it over so I know that I'm pulling the right threads. <laughs> There's been so many times when I've pulled the wrong thread and then lost a stitch on the front. So don't do that. It's such a pain. And then you have to go and then you have to try to get, put the stitch back in. So... I've learned my lesson. Like my, like what my mama used to say, you don't have to tell me twice. Okay, so we have our top stitching around. Now I'm just going to fold this. Give me a little snip right in the window. Don't snip your overlay. Please don't snip your overlay. Okay, and then I'll just, I'm going to run my scissors up underneath here this side and then now we're going to just cut the excess fabric away from the window be careful that you do not cut your overlay so just keep your scissors running right along this is why we don't want that double-sided tape in the way okay because your scissors will get stuck on it okay there we go look this one this side Neatness does not count because nobody's going to see it. Okay, so now we got our pretty overlay. Yay, we got the overlay. Okay, so 
Now we're ready to get our zipper pocket ready. We should have our two zipper pocket pieces, our zipper tape or zipper, whatever type of zipper you are using. And your if you're using zipper tape, you need a zipper pull. Okay, so I'm going to take the first piece. This is the longer side. And I'm going to lay my zip. I always cut my zippers just a little bit longer. But your zipper, if you cut it according to the pattern, it should probably be exactly the same width as the, um, the zipper pocket piece. Okay. I'm just going to put two or three clips here. And we're going to sew the zipper on. The zipper is wrong side down on the right side of the lining piece. So line right side up, zipper right side up. Both are right side up. Okay. And I'm going to sew with a quarter inch seam allowance. Back stitching, start and end, keeping it, keeping the raw edges together. Okay. So that, and you notice I do not have my zipper pull on. I put that on after. It just makes it much easier. My zipper stays straighter because I don't have to worry about going around the bulky zipper. So now I'm folding my seam allowance down toward the back part of the lining. And I'm going to top stitch. Okay going to just top stitch this down so this keeps my pocket piece nice and flat make sure it doesn't sneak up into my zipper okay now that's the first so you see the zippers right side up here's the back part of the lining that's what we want so now we're going to do the same thing right side up right side up, matching the sides of the zipper pocket pieces mm -hmm. and the raw edge of the zipper should uh, meet up with the raw edge of the lining, just like that. Okay, so we'll clip that in place, just like before, and we're going to stitch one quarter inch again. Repeat the same thing. If you, if you can want, you can also use a little double-sided tape to hold this down. But you may also need to switch to a zipper foot if that works best with your machine. I just don't like going through the hassle. Okay, so again, folding the seam allowance down, and we're going to top stitch. If you're using cotton fabric, make sure that it's interface. You might want to uh, press this part down. Okay. And we'll give it a little top stitch. Okay. Now, we have that. I'm going to once again get my double sided tape and right up here in the seam allowance, I'm going to add a little bit here. I don't go all the way to the edges because I find it gets in the way when I sew the sides up. I don't want to stitch through that double sided tape. Okay. Now I'm going to add my zipper pull. So I pull that apart. I'm going to go in at a 45 degree angle on one side. I'll fold this and go in at the other side and make sure that they line up. Looking down the channel, see that they line up and just slide it on. Thank you for acting right. I appreciate you. You see how this is popping up over here? But it doesn't matter right now. It's okay if it pops up because we're going to get that under control later. Okay, so now I like my zipper to close to the left and open to the right. So whichever 
direction you want your zipper in, that's what you need to do. Okay, so the zipper pocket pieces should be about even with the overlay. So I just make sure that it's about even. I'm centering my zipper in that window. Okay, the best I can. Okay, I can remove one side of the du double sided tape here, the backing, so that I can stick that down. Once I really, once I feel like it's pretty neat here, okay. And with this tape, I can kind of adjust later if I need to. Okay, so make sure your zipper's straight. I'm gonna do pull this side up and remove the back end of my tape on that side, and just press it down. Okay. All right. So that looks pretty good to me. Now we're going to top stitch around the, the window. Your pocket will be flat open, okay? So you don't have to sew this in two or three different steps. I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to start in the spot, leave long tails like before, and get the stitching. Move your zipper out of the way. Get to the corner. Go about a one eighth of an inch past the corner. Then pivot. Come up the short side. And stopping about one eighth of an inch past the corner. And pivot. And then we're going to come up this side here. Just my tension a little bit, but seems like on this part my tension's off just a little bit. But I'm not gonna worry about it right now. I'll look at it later. This vinyl is kind of soft, so sometimes you have to make adjustments. Okay, so back. See, I'm holding that thread. It's not going to get me again. Okay, so I'm going to go pull that loop up and tie it off. I got a little my little corners were pulling just a little bit um i gotta adjust my tension a little bit okay so um now bring the top the zipper piece i mean pocket piece down to meet this piece and you see how you will have to trim off the bottom so that the ends match so i put a little clip there and I'm just going to trim the extra off. Just like that. Okay. Now, I'm going to flip it back on this side. And I'm going to fold this back. And I'm going to top up, not top stitch, but stitch my pocket close. Not going to have to leave anything open on the pocket because we're not birthing this bag. So about a quarter of an inch all the way around, back stitching. I'm going to sew around the pocket to close up my pocket. Put this side back. And then careful going over the zipper especially if you have a metal zipper do not sew 
over those teeth. Be careful. Okay. So now we just can trim these little extra pieces of zipper off. Trim, trim, trim. Okay. I like to burn the zipper ends a little bit so they don't fray. Watch you don't set anything on fire. Especially these metallic zippers. Sometimes they will spark. Okay, now we have our zipper, these little chalk marks with a little rag. I can, they'll just rub right off. Okay, so now we have our rebellious hem here that doesn't like to stay. We have our zipper, um, our zipper pocket. Okay. Now, the next step is going to be to add our slip pocket on this other end, okay? So remember, because everything is going to be folded like, th like this, so on the inside. So your slip pocket will be on this end, okay? So you're going to mark our centers. Just like we did up at the top. Let's fold and kind of crease it. And two inches from this folded edge, two inches and centered. So that's the. Just again, make my line, mark my center here. Okay. So, here's our slip pocket piece. And we're going to um, get our slip pocket prepared and add it to our lining. Okay, so again, I have my slip pocket piece, my slip pocket trim i've already marked the center okay this is a one inch piece so i marked the half inch line down the center i'm going to add some double-sided tape to each of the long edges here okay just run it across there just like that Okay, on these longer sides, I'm going to mark, let me move this out the way for a second. Okay, I'm going to mark one half inch because I'm going to fold the raw edges in by a quarter inch. Okay, so I'll do that. And... Again, I'll use some double-sided tape to do that. If you're using cotton, again, you can just press it in place if you want. You don't have to use double-sided tape. Okay. I'm just going to do this. Okay. And we're going to fold these raw edges into that one half inch line. Okay. So when you cut your slip pocket piece, try to cut it as accurately as possible. The measurements are in the on the cutting chart. There is no pattern piece for this, um, but it you know it's so easy to make yourself one if you prefer to have one. You know, just mark the mark the measurements on a piece of uh, paper or cardstock and just cut it out and then notate what it is and you have a pattern piece. Okay, so now have my raw edges folded, creased. I'm gonna bring these raw edges up to meet, making sure all this, the sides are together. So I'll put a couple of clips there, making sure it's nice and neat. Do the other side. Making sure that that side is meeting. If I have to adjust a little bit, I will. 
okay but it seems like it's okay that's why it's important to kind of cut it as accurately as possible okay so now i'm just going to top stitch this raw edge just to hold it in place It's a little one eighth of an inch. Just going to hold it down. Okay. Now we'll take the slip pocket trim. Take one side of the backing off the double sided tape. And then I'm just going to center it the best. It's going to have a little overlap that we're going to trim off later. Okay, I don't go all the way up to the line. I leave about a little, I mean, just a little bit, one sixteenth of an inch. Okay, because that makes it easier to fold this over. <clears throat> and then meet, meet the raw edge under there. There. And then just fold it. You'll feel the edge of the slip pocket underneath. And it should meet up nice on the ends. And you can clip that if you want to hold it down. Um, but we're just going to top stitch. You can, you can top stitch at the top and bottom if you want. I just top stitch the bottom. Okay. So we're going to start. And I am going to back stitch. Okay. You can take these clips off now and I'm going to trim. I just run my scissors right along the edge and I'm just trimming the excess off. Okay. And again, I'll just burn those thread ends a little. You hear my dog kind of huffing and puffing out there. Anyway. Okay, so now that's all top stitched. I'm going to just make a little crease to mark the center so that now we can place that on our main lining. I'll grab that again. Okay, so the slip pop the trim should be facing down towards the bottom okay don't put your pocket this way because then when you have your bag close uh, together your pocket will be upside down so make sure your slip pocket trim is facing down toward the bottom of the bag okay line it up on that the mark you made okay and I'm going to grab a couple. I like to fold this edge over here and kind of hold it in place. Or you can just, you can use some, um, some masking tape. You can use some masking tape. All right. You can use a little piece of masking tape as well because masking tape doesn't leave any residue. You can also do just like this around to kind of hold it in place. Okay. So, all right. Now we're going to top stitch around the slip pocket. Okay. All right. See, I, pop, I put, put it, hold it, put it in the wrong spot. <laughs> Starting moving on. Okay. That's why I like the clips better. But I clipped the wrong side. I clipped this side. Okay, so now make sure it didn't shift any. I'm going to start at this side, right up at the top of the trim, and back stitch two or three times. Okay, and that one eighth of an inch, we're going to top stitch all around to secure our slip pocket in place. If you want to back stitch a little bit in the corners, Go ahead and do that. It gives us a little more security. And pivot and turn this way. I'm gonna make sure it's staying straight. It is. Okay. Get this out of the way. 
and I'm going to come across the bottom. Remove that. Don't need it anymore. Come across. Okay. Come up. I'll back stitch a couple of times there. And then come back. Up to my hand. Back stitch. Just make sure I just burn those threads a little bit. Okay, so we have our pocket. Yeah, our stitch pocket. What I also do, just because I like a little flare too. I'm actually using my little pen there. Okay, what did I do with it? Oh, I use this because it doesn't matter. Okay, right in the corners here, I'm just going to make a little mark. That's where I want to put some rivets. Okay, and here's a little scrap of Peltex. I don't need much. I'm going to cut that in half. Half a couple of little squares. And I'm going to punch a hole there. Both of those. I just do both of them together. That's going to be my little support for my rivet. Okay. Because I don't want my rivet, my pocket to pull on the corners. So I do always put a little reinforcement there. Okay. So punching my hole for my rivets. This is optional. So if you're going to do this, you're going to need a couple of extra rivets. Because this is not required. Okay, so grab my rivets here. Get a couple more out. And I will put this through one of the pieces of tail tags through the back and then add the cap. Same thing on this side. Through the back and add the cap. Okay. And secure. Okay. And so now we have a pretty pull my tape off a little bit there. Okay, so now we have a pretty slip pocket and a pretty zipper pocket. Okay, look at that lining. So that's going to look really good. Okay, so the lining is the lining is ready. Now all we have to do are our side panels. We're going to add our side panels to our lining. We're going to add side, our exterior side panels to our exterior. Then we'll be ready to put it all together. It's almost done, you guys. So hang in there. Okay, so we're ready to uh, attach our side panel. Well, not attach yet. We're not ready to attach our side panels yet. What we're ready to do is attach our uh, strap connector connectors to our exterior side panels. So um, we're doing some hidden connectors. Um, the way um, she has you do them. They're so simple. It's pretty simple. So you're going to have a marking that um, on the pattern for the exterior side connectors. So you're just going to uh, place the mark um, on the back side of your exterior. And we're just going to cut that slip. Okay, so be care very careful. Don't go outside of that line. Stay within the line, okay? Because you don't want it too wide. And I'm just going to cut that slit. Okay. And I have my two connector pieces. I already have um, the center line with some double-sided tape. So I'm going to take the backing off this double-sided tape. And I will fold the raw edges into the center. Okay. 
and meet in the center here just as if we were doing a strap here okay so that's one and I'll do the same thing with the other meeting it up in the center so okay I have my and then I have my my d-rings and I'm going to top stitch um, around these connector pieces make sure I have everything so just with one eighth of an inch seam allowance okay I'm going to top stitch you can top stitch all around or you can just top stitch each side just gonna go all go around. Okay, and I'll do the next one. Okay, so we have those top stitch. We're going to feed it into our connector, making sure that the seam sides come together. Okay. Uh, just like, well, I'm sorry. Not doing that. Excuse me. I forgot what I was doing that quick. <laughs> We're doing hidden connectors. So, wrong side up. Okay, the seam side up. We're going to feed it through the right side. Okay. And the whole, the, that slit should be pretty snug. Okay. We're going to feed it in maybe about halfway. So it looks like this on the other side. Okay. So we're going to do like this. The tail of the connector piece should be going towards the bottom. Okay. And we are going to, hold on, let me make sure I'm doing this right. Yes, okay. Just wanted to make sure. I don't want to confuse you. Okay, so, and then we're going to stitch close to the slit here, right on top of the connector. Okay, so that's what I'm getting ready to do here. Stay within the width of the connector piece, okay, right next to the opening, about one eighth of an inch away, or even just a tad bit closer. And I'm going to stitch and I back stitch a little, and one more, okay, get that nice and secure. And then I'm going to trim my threads. It. This is just, this is not the way some do these hidden connectors, but this was such an easy way. I like, I kind of like it. So now I'm going to feed my D-ring on. And now this goes into the slit. The other end, push it in. Okay. And it should come out on the other side and pull it a little snug until you like it where it is and it should look like that okay so you see that looks so nice okay it looks really nice again i'm just gonna pull it to make sure it's nice and even on both sides Okay, and then there's um she has a little marking for the rivet on there, but like I I've been doing, just gonna eyeball right in the middle, and maybe about a quarter inch down, and I'm just gonna mark for a rivet right there. Okay, 
and I'm just going to place a rivet right in there. Okay, so going to go ahead really quick, do this side. Okay, so again, feeding in, wrong side up. Pull it about halfway through, keeping it straight. I'm going to stitch right across that connector. Feed my D ring on and then go right back through, pushing this in through that slit. And you really want it to be kind of snug because you don't want to have gaps on the side. Okay, don't pull too tight that you pull in your stitches. Okay, and that looks good. Nice and even. Okay. And again, I'm going to put a mark where I want my rivet, about right there. Okay. And I'm going to, we're going to be riveting right through the connector on the back. And that gives it a little extra security there. Okay, so I'm gonna add my rivets. And Get to some more good stuff here. So, so as you can see, I've already these are what? How many rivets? How many? These are this will be six rivets. So, might need, but some some that I've done are optional. Okay, so I'm gonna rivet. The rivet goes right through both. Okay, these are nine millimeter rivets. Um, if your material is particularly thick, you might need a, one with a longer post. Okay. Got that. Alrighty, so look at that. So nice, okay? So what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna trim this down a little, make them even. Now, so the exterior, um, I'm going to set that aside for a minute. And for the um, lining, I have marked a one inch line on the top. I've added some double sided tape. We're going to fold that down, fold the top down to meet that one inch line. Okay. So we won't have a raw edge on the top of our. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to, so we have these notches here. We're going to sew these. Okay. We're going to sew these up to make um, to make our little pleats here. What do they call? Okay, so our pocket has some depth. I mean, our sides have some depth here. Okay, so we're going to sew these at a quarter of an inch. 
Okay, so fold, so you fold it together at the notch, meeting up the sides, meeting up these folded sides and making sure they're even. If you need to, you can put a clip right there to hold it. And then we're just going to sew at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Back stitching really good. Okay. Okay. And then the next one. I can hear that I'm going to have to replace my bobbin in a minute. Let's see how far I can take it. Okay. All right. So we have that one. It's going to look like that. And we'll do the same thing to this one. So right sides together. Okay. It's just like doing darts. You know, if you if you sew clothing, this is the same method for like making a dart. Same thing over here. This up just a little. have our darts what I like to do is so I can open them up I just snip right but don't snip your threads I just snip that little and then that gives me a little more room to open that dart open that you know um and hold and spread it flat okay and you'll see why when we go to attach it so I just trim that little bit off right there Please don't cut your stitches, okay? All right, so we set that aside for a second. Okay, here we go with this double-sided tape in here, Mark. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing on the lining, okay? Yeah, Bobbin, let's see what you got going, okay? So... Can you do I can tell when that bobbin is getting low because it starts to rattle. But as long as I'm not top stitching, I'm going to play bobbin chicken and see when I run out. Okay. Okay, so we have that one done. Okay. So we have our lining side panel. We'll do the next one. Uh oh. Did I pull my thread out? Yep. I pulled my thread out. Got a little too carried away there. I'm pull my thread back in. Okay. I got my basketball mom shirt on a day too early. My, my twin sons, they're playing basketball tomorrow. And it's also the day before their birthday. So maybe I have to get my husband to make me another shirt. Maybe they'll win. Now see, 
Jesus, I'm just getting ugly over here, huh? Well, I started this a little earlier in the day, and then I had to go pick the kids up from school and go to the grocery store. So I'm kind of back in the evening time now. I'm a little tired, but I said I gotta get this done. So excuse me if I'm going a little wacky. Okay. All right, so we got those done. Okay, we want to mark the centers here. So I'm just bringing the darts together here and I'm going to snip these on the lining. Let's make a little snip. Just a little snip. And my dog barking. Okay, and then on these, of course we can't snip these because you know, this is uh, not the raw edges. So what I'll do is I'll just use my chop here and I'm just going to mark, I'll make a mark right there in the center, just like that. Do the same thing over here. Okay, there we go. So now we have our centers marked on our side panels. Now we're ready to attach them. So I'm going to start with the exterior. Okay, so we also have to mark the um, the center on the exterior. So it's not like this. We're not bringing it all the way here. We're going to bring the bottom up to meet these folded side here. Okay. And then that's going to be the center right there. So mark it there on that side. And I'll do the same thing over here. On this side. Okay, so there, there's my center. Okay. And before, before I get started with sewing my side panels on, I'm going to switch out my bobbin real quick. So I'll be back. After I switch out my bobbin, and then I'll show you how we sew the side panel. Okay, so I changed my bobbin out, and I also went ahead and put my label on. Woohoo, look at that. That's so cute. Okay, so now we're ready to put those side panels on. So again, I have my, my center marks. Just make sure I don't rub them off. Okay, so I have my center marks. So I'm going to take my exterior side panel pieces okay and so i'm going to have the wrong side right up against the wrong side here matching up the center first okay so i'm matching that up okay, so side clipping i need quite a few clips I live near, we're not far from an Air Force base here in Palmdale. And um, so every now and then you'll hear like these jets <laughs> flying overhead. Okay, and we're going to match the top up right where the fold is here, okay, on the exterior. So I'm gonna match that up and clip there at the top. And do the same thing. Now we're right here, corner to corner. Okay. okay. Make sure the corners match up nicely. Okay. Now right back here, here's the only thing. I'm just going to add another clip. So make sure these edges match up good. They don't overlap too much. Move that out of the way. Back here where the flap is, okay, we're not going to sew the first one inch. Okay, so about a one inch. So I'm just going to mark that. I have my measuring tape right here. So I'm just going to mark, make a mark one inch down. 
Okay, so we were having some problems. We ran out of some space on one camera, so we had to switch it to another. <laughs> so we're back. Okay, so like I was saying, I we uh, I made a one inch mark down from this um, the top here. We're not going to start sewing right at the top. We're going to start sewing at that one inch mark. So that's just on the flat side. On this side, we're going to stop all the way at the um, at the top where the two meet, where the two points meet here. Okay, so just finish clipping around. So remember these darts, and we so we want to open up those darts. So I just use these little pliers to kind of help smash them open. And we're going to make sure they're tucked in really good. Okay, we don't want those sticking out. So I just kind of flatten it with my pliers or whatever and make sure they're in there. Okay, out of the way. Tucked in. We don't want to see those poking out. Okay, and clip really good. What is that? Something just flew in here on me. <laughs> Look like a mosquito. <laughs> We've been getting a lot of mosquitoes. Okay. So, I'm going to do this one. Like the nerve of that mosquito trying to get in on the eye. Okay. As long as it didn't bite me. Okay, so I'm going to just tuck, just tucking, tucking those little darts. Tucking them in. Clip it, clip it down. And we're just now just going to finish clipping around here and we're going to top stitch about one eighth of an inch all around. Remember, starting one inch down from the flap side. Okay, so here we go. The last clip in there. So we got we have everything clipped around. I'm gonna start at the one inch mark, go all the way around and up to the top here. Okay. I like to use my Stiletto here to make sure everything stays lined up. Keep my needle down in place. Okay, and I am going to back stitch. Okay, and just keep it. Make sure the sides stay together. Take your time <clears throat> because I am sewing in the inside here. Okay, so keep in mind that you will. This is the outside of the bag, so you want to make sure your bobbin thread is straight. It's too hard to sew it the other way around. Okay, so this is where you you really want to make sure that the sewing is neat on both sides. I kind of do a couple of back stitches across that dart just to make sure it's nice and secure. Okay. Make sure that everything stays nicely matched up. Now just keep going around until I get to that other side. You have to kind of push this up and tuck it under. Don't be afraid to manipulate this bag. And show it who's boss. Okay. And we 
be getting in the home stretch. Alrighty, coming around. Sure, those points are tucked in good and meeting up nice. Okay, and get to that corner, and I'm going to back stitch a little. Okay, there we go. All righty, not too bad there. Okay, make sure I got no threads poking out so I'm just gonna put a little bit of heat on there just to melt the ends a little bit alrighty so that looks good that looks really good it's starting to look like a bag right okay so I'm gonna do the other side and then I'll come back show you what that looks like and then we'll do the lining side panels. Go. All right, so both side panels are on the exterior. So, and you see the structures are already forming. We just have this, these little gaps on the back that comes into play when we're adding the lining to, to the exterior. So I'm just gonna set that off to the side and we're going to do the lining side panels real quick. So again, we're bringing this folded edge up to meet this top folded edge of the lining. And I'm just going to snip this. This is going to be the center for our side panels. Okay, so we're meeting that up. And I'm going to snip that. Okay, and we've already marked the center on the side panel. Okay, so just like the exterior. So this time we're going um, to place right sides together. Okay. This should be folded down. It's not sticking, but that's okay. Once we sew it all together, I don't have to worry about that. So we're gonna push that out like that, and we're gonna go right sides together. Okay. And we're going to sew this. And I just push the darts outward, okay? Whichever way you do it, inward, outward, just do it the same on both. Okay, and we're going to match this side. And these we're going to sew all the way. Okay, we're not going to leave anything unsewn here. So all the way up to the top. And we're going to sew these on at a half an inch seam allowance. Okay. So everything should go together, fit together really nicely. Okay. If you if it if it doesn't if you have a little you know puckering in there, just maybe add a couple of snips in your um, in your lining, not the side panel, but in the main lining. Just just a few snips just to ease it in but I haven't had to do that it, it seems like it fits and there's really no stretch to waterproof canvas so I think if it fits pretty well with that then some cotton that gives a little a few using a cotton lining and it has a little more give to it you know it sh you shouldn't have any problems with that okay so now we're going to sew all the way around with a half an inch seam allowance. I'm going to move this out of the way real quick. And we're going to stitch it up. Okay. Make sure those folded edges meet up to half an inch seam allowance. Okay. 
So you have a hard time going around curves, sewing around the curves and keeping the seam allowance. And you can always draw your seam allowance on. So you have a guide. Or if you don't have any markings on your, uh, your plate, And just draw your seam allowances on. Backstitch a little over those darts. Just take your time. Go here, pushing it out. Making sure it's laying flat underneath. Like that. Coming up the other side, still making sure everything is lined up nicely. Don't sew into your flap lining. You're going the one half an inch should come right up on the side. I have a little thread right there, right on the side, but not through your lining. So keep that clear and out of the way. going to be close. Okay. All right. Okay. So now we have that. Now, if you want, you can trim this down a little. Um, not too much because um, we don't want that sticking out we do need to kind of fold this back some when we're attaching it to the exterior but what i do is i kind of come down a little and i just trim this so i don't have all this extra bulk in my so i'm just trimming it down to maybe a little bit less than a quarter inch okay and up that way just like that so i'll do the same thing on the other side and then we'll be ready to put the lining and the exterior together, okay? So I'll be back after I do that. Okay, so the both of the lining side panels are on. Um, so here's the inside of our lining. It's looking so good. We have the flap lining piece attached. Um, so we're going to now drop that into our exterior okay so here we go so we're just going to drop that right on in there just like that and we're going to match up all the corners okay I just fold these seam allowances back here, either to whichever side, to the inside, to the outside. Um, I'm tucking them in and matching up the corners. Okay, because, and I'm just going to place a couple of clips here to hold this in place. Not going to sew this part just yet, but I need to hold it in place. Okay, so I'm just holding it. Make sure everything is lined up good. Okay. And then back here we have flat. So push this down. Okay. And we want to So what we're doing is folding that. Here's our seam allowance to the line. I'm pushing it in towards the side panel. And we're going to line everything up here. We're going to line the top of the lining side panel up with the exterior side panel. 
and at the same time we're lining up these flat the flat panel too okay and it should okay so we like this it's a little tricky right here and it could get a little thick so if you're machine you might have a problem with your machine handling it if it if you use super thick materials but just take your time and then you might have to squeeze it with some pliers or a vise or something to hold it down or some clips to kind of keep it but we're matching up we're matching up everything so i just want to clip the lining the the lining flat pieces the lining flat piece with the exterior flat piece make sure everything is lining up okay and i'm just clipping along this side and then now i can just start to like i said this part gets a little tricky i think did i fold it in did i fold it in towards the back I'm trying to remember what i did now okay. hold on let me show you but yeah towards the back that's what i did okay there we go. So I don't fold that seam allowance towards the inside of the, the side. I actually fold it in back between the flat pieces. So you see how it's folded in there. That's what I'm doing. That's what I've been doing. And then this lines up here. So we're kind of sandwiching that in. And like I said, it can get a little bulky here. Really, really bulky. So I just kind of been squeezing, squeezing that to flatten it the best I can. I place a clip there. Okay. And then I'm going to finish clipping just to make sure everything is meeting up and matching up pretty good. Okay. So. So that's what that side will look like, okay? And then I'll also, so over here, match up the corners. We're not sewing this part yet, but I'm matching it up just to make sure everything lines up, okay? Pull your seam allowance from your side panel and push it between the two flat pieces, just like that. Tuck it as best you can and then matching it up with the exterior side. Okay. And then, like I said, you got to give it a good squeeze. Good squeeze it. Make sure. Nice that. Make sure that your lining doesn't poke out okay everything is I'm telling you this part here is the is the part that you really have to take your time and just make sure you're getting it all matched up good okay so now there we go that's why I like these binder clips because they also help to hold everything in place. So I didn't line that up as good as I want. I still need to let me put another clip here. Make sure everything is in place. There we go. Okay. Now. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Now I'm gonna clip. Clip this. Clip, 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 clip. Push your line. Everything should. Okay, so that's what we have here. Okay? That's what we have. So now what we're going to do is that little one inch 
that we didn't sew earlier. Got a little thread sticking on. Just burn that a little. We're going to sew that one inch down. Okay, and it's also going to grab that lining. Okay, making sure that top edge is up a little more there. Okay, so on both sides. So what I'll do, I do is I just press it down like this. Okay. Press it down. Make sure everything is fine. It's a little finagling. It's a little. I'm not gonna lie. This is probably my least favorite part. But I mean, this is such a small part that sometimes you just have to make sure that, that you're getting that just right. Okay, so I just wanna make sure I'm getting it right. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in and I'm going to, um, I'm going to sew, I don't know, this side. Of course, cause I'm on video here, I'm videoing that this side wants to kind of give me a hard time. The other side is behaving, but this side does not want to behave. It wants to keep pushed. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to sew that that one inch that we left unsewn. Okay. And just make sure everything is lined up over here. Okay. So I'm just pulling with my pliers a little. Got to be careful though. Okay. Um, here we go. There we go. And it's just my materials are a little thicker, that's all. But I know my machine can handle it, so I'm not worried about it. Okay, so I'm ready. Woo! I'm ready. Okay, so dropping it down. And it's that one inch. Okay. And hopefully I didn't make a mess under there because it's so thick. And I'm going to check. Uh, I didn't make a mess under there. So there we go. Okay. Well, I'm going to show you what that looks like. Just cut my threads out of the way. not too bad. So you see on the side burn the threads a little here and here. Okay. And then afterwards I just press it a little more just to keep it a little flat here. Make sure everything lined up. Okay. So you can see you can see it's just it's a little thicker right there. But it's on, I like it, and I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. So this side, I kind of do from this direction. Okay, And I'm going to start my stitches where I left off over here before. Making sure everything's all lined up. Not moving. Okay. Keep everything straight here. Keep it. You really have to make sure it, it stays tucked under really good. That lining. So the lining doesn't try to poke out. It's only because it's just so thick right there. And this vinyl, let me just pull this out a little bit. This this vinyl is really, it's kind of thick. So that's why I'm kind of having a little hassle, but it's nothing I can't get a control of. Okay. 
There we go. I just need to clip that down there. Okay, there we go. Woo! Little work out there. I ain't gonna lie. This little part is the part that just makes you gonna go. I don't want to do this part, but you have to. You have to, and um, I just you know, I wish I could have made it look a lot easier, but you know, some things are just not that they're not gonna be that super duper easy. But you can do it, okay? Just know that you can do it. Okay. All right, we got it on. We got that on. Woo! So just be careful. Whatever materials you choose, make sure your machine can handle it. Cause that part does get a little thick. Okay. Okay. Just these threads here. There we go. Okay. So that's on. Now, you know what? I'm gonna remove these clips for just a second because I don't like to keep clips in my vinyl too long. Now we're going to sew and attach this top part of the lining to the exterior just along the top of the side panels okay this is also a little tricky to get inside here i don't sew from the outside i sew from the inside so make sure if you do it this way that your bobbin is going to cooperate with you okay so i'm starting right in the corner and i'm just going to sew from corner to corner Okay, not all the way around to the front of the bag, but just right here on the side panels. Okay, I'm attaching the tops of the side panels. Okay. With a one eighth of an inch seam allowance, so just top stitch. Okay. And we have no stabilizer in this bag yet. So it should be pretty flexible and easy to smush down. Okay. I'm, going to, I'm just tucking in the seam allowance from the side panel, making sure it's not poking out. Okay. And I'm going to seam to seam. Okay. So now that side is in. Okay, so this side is attached. My uh, side panel. I'm going to do the other side and get that one attached. Again, I'm starting right at the seam to this seam. Okay, so I'm going to move this clip out the way a little and smush it down and get my needle under there. Making sure that seam allowance is tucked under and out of the way. Okay, now. Make sure your lining doesn't creep up over the edge of your exterior. Just keep it, keep them. And all the way to this end. Alrighty. So, here we go. Burn those little ends there. Make sure 
after nothing is kind of loose. All right. Are you seeing? We got it. We got it. The inside. You see that? Looks nice. The line is laying nicely. Okay. So now, the next thing we're going to do is insert our stabilizer. And then, yes, 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 we have to glue. We have to glue a little more. Okay. So, got my stabilizer. Got my stabilizer piece over here. Okay. Here's my stabilizer. I want it to come, um, I want the blue side up against the exterior. So I'm gonna feed it down. Wait, am I putting this in there? Did I do it right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm that down. Okay. I have to just make sure. Okay, so I'm gonna feed this down in bag reach in under the lining and just pull it down get it into place it's okay if it wants to fight you a little and press down just pressing and pulling Move the lining out of the way. And then push it down. There we go. There. Pull it up through the other side. And then just press down. Make sure it's press down to the bottom and in place. You put those folds in there ahead of time. So it helps, it really helps it to make, shape the bag. And I'm just pressing my lining down. Make sure it's in there. We don't want the, the stabilizer to extend past these, the flap. So make sure that air, that it comes down low enough, okay, that it's not, ex so if you need to push it down some more, push it down some more. And if yours is, a, if it ends up being a little long, don't be afraid to trim some off. Okay, better to trim it off than have it in there and it's not fitting properly. So what again I'm going to do is make sure the stabilizer is in properly tucked into the side, not sticking out past the exterior or the lining. And I'm just going to clip to hold this in place. This just holds the stabilizer in place so it doesn't shift. Push that down just a little more. You don't want to see any stabilizer peeking out. Okay. So now I'm just going to push down. Making sure and my stabilizer's in there good and it's flat. Okay. It's not pushing into my side panels. And it's, it's in the sides really good. This part 
just takes a little work. Pressing my light in place. There we go. There. Okay. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is get the glue. I'm going to add some glue here and here and get this glued. And then also on top and here. And we're going to glue this and, and then clip everything. And we're going to get ready to sew around this part. Okay. So, I'm going to get the glue going, get it on there, have it clipped, and I'll come back and I'll sew that up. Okay, so I've added the glue on the inside here, on the flap, and then this front part here. So it's all glued inside the uh, Pequod dog. <laughs> so the stabilizer is glued on the front, on the exterior, and onto the lining. So um, now I'm ready to sew. I'm not, I'm not sewing the front yet. I'm going to sew the flap. So it's easier to sew the flap on the inside um, as opposed to trying to do like this and flatness. So again, that bobbin got to be on point. Okay, so. I'm gonna get ready. My cameraman is doing something. What camera? Sorry, camera girl. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to press this down the best I can, and I'm going to start right here at the edge of the flap, and I'm gonna come all the way around, around those curves. Make sure everything matches up nicely, okay? So one eighth of an inch seam allowance and get it under there and make sure my thread is under there good. Okay. I'm going to hold these threads when I get going and I am going to back stitch a little there. Okay, not too much. Okay. And we are off to the races. <laughs> okay, this is the part you really want to take your time. Make sure these little points are lined up, matched up. Okay. Around these curves, it's a lot of sharp corners. might even want to make sure you get a new needle in if you need to before you do this. Make sure your bobbin has enough thread because you don't want to have to start this over. to the other side just making sure everything is staying together sometimes I like using these little pliers because they're blunt so I don't have to worry about poking into my vinyl okay. getting around to the other side now I'm just making sure those corners match up, those points match up in the line. Okay. Almost there, we're almost 
there. back a little and get in there those last couple of stitches in that back stitch okay Woo! I did it, did it, did it okay I hope and pray that the front looks great ooh, 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 we look good it looks great it looks like the Getting the shape of the bag in, that's all. You have to kind of work it a little because it's going to be a little stiff at first, okay? There we go. All right, so now we're ready to stitch this. Again, I'm going to stitch from the inside. Oh, I didn't show you. Oh, sorry. See? You got it. It's, all, it's nice. It looks great, right? Okay, so I'm going to just open this up the best I can. It is stiff because that stabilizer's in there now. And so, but I still find this is the easiest way to um, stitch this part, at least for me. Okay, so I'm starting right in that seam, right in the corner, because we already did the sides. And I'm going to get right in there. Okay, make sure I don't have any nesting. I'm gonna hold these threads down. And go in the back stitch. Okay. Sorry if this is hard to see, but I'm just going right across this front here till I get to the other side. Okay. To the other side, I'll back stitch a little. Oh my goodness, we have got that done. Okay. Okay. Now the only thing left to do is my adjustable strap and finish off my lock. And just make sure it's sitting. There we go. Oh, it's gonna look so good. So I just need to put the other piece to my lock on. So what I do, I just kind of measure this part is okay, it's going to be what? It's about um, six, about six and three quarters across. So that's going to be about three and three eighths is going to be the center. Okay. Right in there. Okay. Right there. About right there. So I know the, um, the other part of my lock. will go about right there so this part here is going to center i'm going to just center it right there um so i'm going to make the hole for this install it and um then i'll be back i won't do the strap the crossbody strap um on camera so because i think there's so many videos out there for how to uh, make a um an adjustable strap. So 
I'll come back, show you when I'm done, and we can celebrate. Alrighty, be right back. All right, my Kayla bag is all done. I have the strap attached, and I'm just loving it. Okay, so um, you see how it has such nice structure. Um, look at the lining, it looks so great. And um, this crossbody strap or adjustable strap, I, I have to get some um, more three quarter strap ends I'm going to put on there. Um, but otherwise, it's all done. I really love it. I love the way the strap comes up over the flap, but it doesn't pull the strap, pull on the flap. I know some of the bags like this, the strap is attached to the top. I think I kind of like it like this. Okay. Um, really great bag. Really fun. I mean, it has its little challenges, but when you want a nice structured class little bag like this, it's worth it. So thank you for watching with me. Uh, please make sure you like and subscribe. Um, I'm sorry it takes me so long to get new content out there. I'm going to work on that. And I promise you every video is not going to be 30 hours. This video, this uh, bag is reminds me of the Ruthie bag I did. And, um, you know, so there's some work on here. But I really like it. And I like it so much I made four. So I just want to end by showing you my other Kayla's and my daughter pointed out like these are the Harry Potter house these the house colors right mm -hmm. she'll have to tell me what's what so do you want me to tell you yeah she yeah tell me Jazzy okay. the blue is Ravenclaw Ravenclaw that's Hufflepuff Hufflepuff Gryffindor Gryffindor and Slytherin and Slytherin oh Okay, so I did I did this totally by accident. And then you see the green one has the flat handle. Um, and then I did the road handle and all the rest. So, and oh, I also want to point out that I did a one inch strap on the yellow one. So you, you know, because I didn't have a three quarter inch on uh, in gun metal. And I also did these, um, I did these strap anchors instead of the hidden connectors. So you can do all, you can do, use whatever you have. Okay, make them unique. Okay, so go ahead, get the pattern, make you a Kayla bag by Mecca Posh Crafts. Thank you for watching.